Hey everyone, it's Guilherme and in this video we are going to expand our Firebase implementation and work with Firestar, which is a NoSQL database provided to us by Google. We're going to use it to save players profile information, so you can think of it as some type of game that is going to save players that are playing Dungeons and Dragons, so we're going to save for instance their class and their stats, but it's just an example and you could use the same approach to save several different things, for instance the player inventory, their state, for instance, their HP, stamina, position, etc. Just to name a few things. This is a demo running, and if I log into an account, you can see that right after we are signing successfully, we're going to go to the edit profile screen, and then all my information is going to be loaded from the database. You can see that currently my nickname is Guilherme, and I am a warrior. Let's change this to something like increase my intelligence and dexterity, click on confirm and now my information has been saved. If I log in once again, you can see that my information has been loaded successfully and it is the one that I updated previously. As for requirements, the only thing that you should have done before watching this video is watch the previous part, so if you haven't done so yet, please do so. And just like the previous video, this one is also going to be a code along. So if you want to follow, you can go to our repository, go to the Firebase Firestar project and import into Godot the start version of this demo. Once again, before going to Godot, we're going to open our Firebase console and head over to database. And now we're going to create a database. Firebase is going to ask you if you want to start in either locked mode or test mode. The test mode is going to allow anyone to make requests to your database, either write or read data, and in locked mode, no one is going to be able to do so, unless you are inside of the console. For now, let's keep it at locked mode, later we're going to change this. And we can click on enable. The Firestar database is a NoSQL database. This means that it's not going to work with relationships between tables as you would in a normal database, if you are familiar with that, but instead, we're going to work with collections and documents. So you can have, for instance, a collection of users and each user in that collection is going to be a document which is going to hold some information and that can also hold some other collections. This might sound a little bit weird, so let's create a few collections and documents here in the console so we can see how that works. The first one that I'm going to create is going to be called Countries. You can click on Next. When creating a collection, it should start with a document and you can see that here we have the document ID. Now we're going to use the auto ID, but later when creating the documents for our users profiles, we are going to use their actual ID in our authentication system as the ID of our documents. The field is just going to be the name of this country. And the value is going to be for now Brazil. And we can click on save. Now we have a collection of countries that has only one country at the moment, which is Brazil. As you can see, the name Brazil is a field of our document, but its actual ID is this long string that you're seeing here. So if we wanted to access this country, we wouldn't look for Brazil, but instead we would look for this specific ID. Now inside of Brazil, let's add another collection, which is going to be called cities. And now instead of using a auto-generated ID, let's create our own, for instance, Sao Paulo. And because we created a custom ID, we don't have to add any fields to this document, so let's click on save. So now what we have is a collection of countries that has Brazil and inside of Brazil we have a collection of cities and inside of these cities we have Sao Paulo. We could have also added more cities here, for instance, Rio de Janeiro. And now we have two cities in our cities collections which is sitting inside of our country. In our case, we're not going to be storing cities and countries but instead we're going to be storing user profiles. And inside of these profiles collections, we're going to have different documents for each of our players. With that said, let's go back to the home of our database, select our countries collection, and let's delete it. Now, before continuing, you want to go to the rules tab of your database. And here you're going to see something like this. We are creating a rule that is going to allow read and write in all of the documents of our database if false. As false is always going to be false, we are never going to allow anyone to read or write data to this database. So what we want to do is change this part after the if to something like this. We're going to check if our auth is different than new. This means that this user has been authenticated and that he can indeed make requests to this database. 
there's going to be a link in the description of the video with the documentation for this part of databases inside of Firebase, where you can see how you can construct rules, for instance, to protect different types of documents and so on and so forth. With that said, we can now go back to Godot. Now we are going to start modifying our Firebase script to handle the communication between us and the Firestart. The Firebase script is going to now be responsible to updating, deleting, posting, and also retrieving information from our database. And we are going to use those more generic functions in other scripts to determine to which document we should post this information and so on and so forth. So let's begin by opening our Firebase script. It's currently looking the same way as it was before in our previous lecture. But right after our API key, we're also going to need a project ID. And once again, we're going to get this from Firebase. So let's go back to our console. We can get this information by going to this icon, project settings. And right here where you see project ID, it's probably the same one as the project name. You can just copy and go back to Godot and paste your ID into the project ID. We are also going to need another URL here, which is going to be our Firestar URL. And is in this URL that we are using our project ID, right after our projects, we are telling Firebase which project it is. In this case, it's going to be the name of yours. In my case, it's test Godot project. And at the end, we reach to our documents. And what we are going to do throughout this lecture is giving the ID of the document or collection that we want to post something or the ID of the document that we want to update or delete, for instance. We are going to construct this URL on our functions inside of this script, depending on what document we want to operate. Now we are going to make a modification here that is going to break our code momentarily, but we are going to change our current token to be called user info. And instead of being a string, it's going to be a dictionary because now we are going to hold both our ID token and also our user ID which is stored on our authentication system. And we're also going to rename our get token ID from result to get user info. The return type is now going to be a dictionary. And instead of returning just our ID token, we're going to return a dictionary with both our token and our ID. Again, this name is coming from the JSON that is being returned to us by the server. And you can print this information if you want to take a closer look into it. Before fixing our register and login functions, we're going to create a new one which is going to be called get request headers. This function is going to return to us the headers. Remember that we talked about them in the previous lecture, but I said I was going to explain them in this one. As we want to authenticate our users when they are making a request, we need to use these headers to tell our server that this user is actually authenticated and we're passing to it our user token as a header. Now, the headers are just a way for us to pass information to the server, which is not actually data. For instance, in this first header, we are saying that the content type that we are sending to the server is of type JSON. And in the second one, we are sending an authorization header of type bearer. And right after that, we are setting our user info token. So as you can see, there are key value pairs separated by columns. And here on our authorization, we have this bearer word, which should be written just like this and have only one space. And right after that, we should have our token. It's just by convention because we have several different types of tokens that we can use for authorization. In this case, we are using the better one. Now let's go down and fix our register function by changing this line. And also on our login function, we will also have to fix. There is one more thing that we have to fix in our login function. And that is that we are going to pass one more information with our body, which is going to be return secure token. This is going to tell Firebase that we want a token that we can use to authenticate our user when we try to make another request. Now that this is in place, we can start to create the functions that we're going to use to communicate with Firestar. The first one is going to be the save document function. And here we're taking a path. Remember that we talked previously how we were going to access documents using the URL of Firestar. This is just going to be the rest of that path. For instance, if we're going to access the collection of users, we are going to pass this function, the path of just users. As this function is going to save a new document, we need to know which fields this document is going to have and this is going to be held inside of our fields dictionary. And lastly, we also have our HTTP request that we've been using previously. We begin by creating our document dictionary and setting the fields field of our dictionary to be equal to our fields dictionary. This sounds a little bit complex, but that is because the JSON that we have to send to Firestar expects the fields to be inside of the fields object of this JSON. So that is because we have lots of fields going on around here. We're then going to convert this document into a JSON, create our URL 
by concatenating our Firestore URL with our path. And finally, we are going to make our request by passing to it our created URL, the get request writers, which is the function that we just created. The method is going to be post because we are sending something to Firestore to save. And finally, we're going to pass our body. The next function is going to be the get document. And all of this function is going to do is reach out to Firestore and say, hey, can you give me the information regarding this specific document? When that's done, our HTTP request is going to make a signal. And inside of the script that called this function, we're going to grab that information and do whatever we want to do with that. As we did before, let's first create our URL and finally make our request. The difference that you can see here is that we don't have a body and now the method is going to be get. That is because we're trying to get any information from the server. And when we want to do that, using this convention that we are using with Firestore, we have to use the method get. This way, Firestore knows that we are trying to get uh, information from them and they're going to return it to us. The next function that we're going to create is going to be the update document. This is when we already have a document saved, for instance, our player profile, and we want to change something inside of that document. The same way as we did on our save document, we are going to need the document dictionary, a JSON body, and also our URL. And finally, we're going to make our request. Pay attention that here, once again, the only difference is our method, which in this time is going to be patch. This way, Firebase knows that we are trying to change the contents of a specific document. It's also important to note that we have to pass even the fields that were not modified when using the patch method or else what's going to happen is that Firebase is going to look at the fields that we sent to them which are the ones that we modified and it's going to only add them to this document and remove all of the other ones that we had previously. So make sure that you send all of the fields when you're using this method. And lastly, we are going to create our delete document function. The same way as we did before, we create an URL and we make a request to the correct URL by passing our headers and once again, the only difference is our method, which in this case is delete, which is really self-explanatory. Now our Firebase script is done and we can head over to our profile and start creating our script. Let's open our user profile scene by going to the interface and searching for the profile and open the user profile scene. Go back to the 2D view. Here we have two types of information that we are going to send to our server. One is string values, which are our nickname and our class. And the other are going to be integer values, which is going to represent our strength, intelligence, and also dexterity. Let's begin by attaching a new script to our user profile. The template is going to be empty, and we can click on create. In this script, we are going to grab all of the information that we have inside of our user profile control nodes, which are their nickname, class, strength, intelligence, and dexterity. And we are going to create a new dictionary and send it over to Firebase and depending if we already have a profile in Firebase we're going to update this document but if we are a new player and we don't have a profile yet we're going to create a new one to this player. So let's begin by getting a reference to our HTTP request node and right after that we're going to get a reference to all of the control nodes that we are going to need. We're going to create a flag which is going to hold the information if our profile is new or not. This way we can know if we're going to update or create a new profile for our player. And we are also going to create a new variable which is going to determine if we are sending any information to the server. For instance, we are saving something or if we are just retrieving something from there. Lastly, we are going to need a dictionary which is going to hold all of the fields that we are going to send over to Firebase. In this case, our nickname, character class, strength, intelligence, and also the dexterity. As soon as the player enters this scene, we are going to reach out to Firebase and try to get the document containing his information. As you can see, the path that we're passing to our get document function is inside of our users slash our user ID that we're getting from our Firebase, reaching out to our user info dictionary and grabbing its ID. And finally, we're passing the HTTP request node. And if you remember correctly, our HTTP request is going to emit a signal once our request has been completed. So let's go back to our scene, select our HTTP request node and connect its signal to our script. We're going to start off the same way as we did before by converting our response body into a dictionary. And right after that, we are going to match our response code. In the case that we get a 404, this means that we have not found a profile inside of our user's collection. So we are going to notify our player and tell him to enter his information. And we're going to set our new profile flag to true and return from the function. Now, in the case that our response code is equal to 200, this means that everything went okay. And we are first going to check if the information sent flag is set to true. This means that we just sent something to Firebase. And because of that, we are going to notify our player to let him know that everything went correctly. And we're going to set our information sent to false. 
And finally, we're going to set our profile to be equal to the fields that we get inside of our result body. Remember that back in our Firebase script, we also use the fields inside of our dictionary. And here we can see then again, and that is because this is the way that Firebase structures the JSON that is sent back to us. Now we are going to go back to our sync tree and look for our confirmation button. It should be all the way to the bottom. And we're going to connect its pressed signal to our script. We will begin by doing some validation and checking if our nickname or character class are empty. If that's the case, we're going to notify our player and return from the function. Now, if everything is okay with our form, we're going to construct our profile dictionary. Here we are creating different key value pairs and setting them to the correct key inside of our dictionary. For instance, for our nickname, we're setting another dictionary, which is going to contain first the type of value that we are sending to Firebase. In this case, it's going to be a string and later the value of this field. So remember that back when we saw our scene, I said that we have two types of data inside of this form. One which were our strings and the second one which were our integers. Once again, this convention right here is because of the way Firebase handles things. This way you can know what is the name of the field, in this case nickname, and what type of value it's going to hold, in this case a string value, and then the actual value of that field. Now after we've constructed our profile dictionary, we're going to see if this is going to be a new profile. Based on that, if it is indeed a new profile, we are going to use the save document function inside of our Firebase. And we're going to pass with our profile and our HTTP request. Now the first parameter here, we're going to pay a little bit more attention. That is because we are reaching out to our users. But you can see that here we have this weird syntax. That is because we're passing an URL parameter to Firebase. In this case, the parameter is document ID. We're setting it to be equal to our user ID. Once again, this is how Firebase is handling things. If we want to create a new document with a specific ID, like we did in the beginning of the video by creating a CD that had the ID of Sao Paulo, for instance, we have to use this parameter in our URL. In this case, we are using the user ID to create its document with the same ID. This way we can reach out to it easily when we want to, as we're doing here on our ready function. Now, if this is not a new user, we are going to just update this document. And here you can see that the URL is different. We access it the same way that we are doing on our ready function by just using the slash and appending to it our user ID. And once again, we're passing to it our profile and our HTTP request. And finally, because we are sending this information to Firebase, we're going to set our information sent flag to true. Now our script is almost done. We're just going to go to the top and create a setter for our profile and go all the way to the bottom once again to create that function. And the reason why we are creating this setter is because we want to update the values of our control nodes whenever we use this setter, for instance, when we gather this information inside of our request completed function. So here we are first going to set our profile to be equal to the new value that it just received. And we are then going to reach out to our labels and set their text to be equal to the string value that we are receiving according to their fields. For instance, our nickname text is going to be equal to our nickname string value and the character class text is going to be equal to our character class string value. Lastly, we're going to set the values of our sliders by converting the values that we are receiving from Firebase into integers. And also pay attention that here we are reaching out to integer value and not string value. With this, almost everything is done. We just have to go back to our login script in which once we are successfully logged in, we are going to Build for two seconds and then we're going to change our scene to our user profile and also make sure that inside your firebase script you have set your api key to the correct one now we can press f5 and test our game i'm going to log into my account and as soon as we enter this page we're going to get the message that please enter your information because this is the first time that i'm actually logging into this account now I'm going to create my profile, I'm going to be a warrior, I'm going to increase my strength, increase my intelligence, and leave my dexterity at 3, and finally click on confirm. Now my information has been sent to the server and has been saved successfully. I'm going to run the game once again and see if everything is going to load correctly. Now I just logged into my account, and after a few seconds, you can see that everything was loaded correctly. Congratulations, you just integrated Godot and Firebase Firestar service. In this video, we saw how we can use the Firestar 
REST API to communicate with our Firestore database. We saw how we can update, save, and also gather data from our database. And in the next video, we're going to see how to use the delete functionality. If you are looking for a challenge, you can try to add more fields to our user profile and even try to protect some of the roots of our database because as of now, any user that has access to another user ID is going to be able to change his information. What we are checking in Firebase is if the user is logged in and not if he is the actual owner of that document. And lastly, another thing that you could try is to implement Godot's tutorial on how to save games, but instead of saving to a local file, send the information to Firestore and then retrieve it afterwards. Once again, I'm sorry about my voice, I'm still a little bit sick. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.